guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale with two first time pro guests. I'm super excited to have them on. It is Dion and Jan, both from the Netherlands, both top players. And you can see here, I am in the clan with them. And number one and number two global right now are in the clan with me. Uh, and uh, Jan, you were actually number one uh, for a good chunk of yesterday as well. Guys, first of all, welcome to the channel. How you doing? Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm doing great. Good to be Thanks here. that you're having us on your channel. Dude, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. Both of you have uh, been doing really well for a while now, but recently uh, you guys are absolutely killing it, dominating with this Lava Loon Freeze deck that's really taking over the meta right now inside the game. Uh, I guess the deck was created by Dion, who's on the call. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. It's, uh, awesome. I created it it's two to two weeks ago. It's, uh, two really weeks cool ago. Deck. So tell us a little bit about what goes into kind of a deck creation from your standpoint and like how much fine tuning and tweaking and how you you ended here at the as the end result of this deck well i started with my lava loon deck and i it didn't really work against the meta because okay. the zap bait was too strong and it keep getting countered so it it's the free started against the inferno tower because i guess lightning was too weak and Zap didn't work also, so I guess if I freeze with a Balloon and a Lava Hound, that should be really strong. And the Zap bait parts, I put it in as a defense, so I really not. I didn't need much cards to defend, because it's a deck with many offensive cards, so I just needed some good defense. Okay, so wh what did you do? Like you said, it took you know you created the deck two weeks ago. Did you make any changes to any of the cards, or was it pretty much the same deck from the from the get go, and it's just kind of catching on now? Uh, I uh, from the original deck I created it from, or did I change it in the two weeks? Yeah, I guess just tell us a little bit about the process. Like, did you add and subtract oh. any cards? Well, I created the, the original deck like I guess three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And that was with three. The I got the I didn't got the pumping yet, so I cr I put it in the pump after that for the skeleton army, and okay. it worked really well. Okay, and now in this in this final iteration of the deck, you guys are playing skeleton army, goblin gang, and the pump in the deck, correct? Um, uh, yes, I I play a lot of skeleton army, but recently I just switched today also to. Three minions instead of Skeleton Army. Okay, so a, a bunch of different kind of small tweaks you can make to the same, you know, I guess, uh, standard deck. Uh, so so both of you kind of have just been using this dominating. Tell us a little bit about how you're, how we're going to be playing this deck. Well, so, it's, just, uh, it's just more about creating a counter to the what the opponent has. And... Creating an elixir advantage. Yes, and sometimes you got to ignore pushes so that you can make a really big lava loom push so you can go in and take at least one crown like a hawk so you can go all in hard. You just pump, defend with like goblin gang. With goblin gang, you can make positive elixir trade and with minis as well. And if you make that, you can pump up and then just lava hunt in the deck. Okay, so let's break it down between the first two minutes of the match and then double elixir time. I guess just so we're not talking all over each other, I'll start with you, Jan. How are you playing this deck in the first two minutes? And then how does that change when you get to double elixir time? And before you answer that, both of you, can you answer what do you think might... I should have asked this the first question. But what do you think will happen once the balloon damage changes to two seconds versus one? Do you think the deck will still be viable? Um, I think it won't really change a lot because the balloon um, drop is just one or two seconds um, later, but it will make a little bit different, but I think this deck will still dominate a lot. Okay, great. So, in, in Jan, back to, the, back to the first question I asked, and also thoughts on the balloon? Um, on, the, on the first two minutes, I usually just pump and let the damage go and um, then when i have an elix advantage on him and sometimes people just overspend like oh goblin bear goblin gang mm -hmm. and then i'll sometimes just ignore it on the uh, before two times elix and i'll just drop a lava 
hound, drop a balloon in the back, and then spend some support troops, and then freeze everything, and I go all in. And then uh, double elixir time, I play a little bit more defensively, and uh, but still push and punish him. Okay, and a follow-up question there. You say you play a little bit more defensively. That's interesting. Uh, let's get back to the beginning of the match, though. Let's say you have a starting hand, and you have a Lava Hound in your starting hand. Maybe you have Lava Loon in, like, minions and arrows. Uh, would you cycle to pump, or would you go ahead and play aggressively with the Lava Hound at the very beginning? I would start with the Lava Hound. Okay. Because if... If you cycle, you would just waste elixir, and you don't have really cheap cards like minions. If your pump is the second card, you can cycle minions. But if it's not the next card, I'll just drop a lava loon, lava hunt in the back. Okay, and Dion, would you say the same thing there? Yeah, I would say the same thing. Only about the first two minutes, I usually play a lot more aggressive in the first two minutes because yeah. the opponents don't really got much elixir to defend as well. So if you got a really strong push going on, they in double elixir time, they just can just like spam some things. But in the single elixir time, they just just can't keep yeah. up with the Lava Loon push. Okay, and speaking of Lava Loon, Dion, when you start a Lava Loon, or when you do a Lava Hound push in the first two minutes of the match, are you always trying to get your Lava Hound behind that, or excuse me, the Balloon behind that Lava Hound? Or are there sometimes you're just going to go ahead and play Minions or something to distract Inferno, say? Uh, I I prefer the Balloon because I uh, play a lot with this deck and I discovered even if the Lava Hound and Balloon go into the Inferno, they will kill it and the Balloon will get almost full health with Puffs on the tower. So. It doesn't really need that much support in the first half. Okay, and tell us a little bit, uh, Dion, about the, the freeze spell in this deck. How are you using it in, I guess, maybe even more important, or, or as importantly, how are you not using it? Are you doing it defensively much, or are you saving it for that big offensive push? Well, I'm, I'm not really using it defensively. I do it on the occasion, but that's because if you've got, like, a, a Valkyrie and a... Hawk Rider on your tower, you can do minions and freeze because you don't really got much of Goblin Gang, but mm -hmm. I use it more offensively. And when I use it offensively, I only use it on the Inferno Tower to freeze it. And there's a really good tip for that because you just need to freeze the Inferno Tower and not the tower. But I guess we get back to that later on. Well, yeah, that's, and, that's, this is a good time to get into that. So, yeah, talk about the freeze strategy. Why are you not freezing the tower? Because uh, you don't want it to retarget? Yeah, that's really interesting because the Lava Hound got so much health. And if, the, if you just freeze the Inferno, the Lava Hound will just get arrows from the tower. But the tower won't retarget on the balloon. And the balloon is more valuable in a push. Okay. So, if you just freeze the Inferno, the Inferno will die and the tower won't retarget on the balloon. Okay, that's a really interesting point there. So freezing just the Inferno tower. Now, what are other examples of when you would use freeze? Would it be, you know, against like three musketeers, uh, I imagine? Yeah, yeah yes. against... Uh, can I... Yeah, you can you can go ahead, go ahead, uh, Jan. Um, so when I play with just three muskies, I have a replay of that soon. They usually just drop them three muskies in the back, and I have a lava loon. So what you got to do is wait until the lava lava hound pops, and then freeze the three muskies. So all the pops will explode and target the three musketeers. Ooh, I like that. I like that. And then the balloon will connect to the tower. Okay, because otherwise you'd, be, you'd have to go against the three musketeers uh, defensively afterwards if you didn't wait till the hound popped. Yes. It's really good if you wait till that pot and then freeze. The three musketeers usually just die. You want to have a really big counter push. Okay. Uh, so, Jan, what about anything else in in terms of you said you play? Both of you said you play more defensively in the last or when it gets to double elixir time. Let's say that you don't have one of their tower down uh, towers down. So both of you, it's it's still tie game going into overtime. How are you adjusting your play style and how are you trying to you know make that final push 
uh, when it gets to double elixir time. Um, in double elixir time, I would just pump. I would just pump um, before that. So I would just defend, and then I, I would just, uh, when I have the pump, then I would start a lava on push in the back. And when he pushes me with like a hawk, I will usually like mega minion okay. or, or um, goblin gang there. And then I will support. And I want, if someone has a rocket, I don't want to stack my my lava loon with mega minion or uh, minions. I will just wait until he rockets and then I will go in with mega minion. And this use of freeze is really important. If you use a freeze important, you can take stars really quickly. And would you say, Jan, that there's any time that you're playing just straight up, maybe if the opponent comes at you too aggressively, will there be a time that you'll play the balloon freeze without the Lava Hound? Um, no, I won't really do that. If someone plays really aggressively against me, I'll just ignore that whole push and start the Lava Hound in the back and to okay. then do a balloon. He won't have enough elixir to defend it. Okay, Dion, the same same question to you. Is there ever a time that you're going to play a balloon solo or no? No, it should be on a really special occasion because if I am to I might tower down and it's just like 20 seconds to go, I can play a naked balloon, but only then. And a balloon gets really quickly countered without the lava on, so I almost never do it. It's it's not a really good idea to do it. Okay, so it sounds like it sounds like this deck is all about trying to maintain a, a big elixir advantage and then punishing your opponent. You know, obviously with Lava Loon Freeze being the ideal offensive combination. And in the first two minutes, you're going to kind of pick your spots wisely and try to pump up and protect your pumps. I guess one thing that I personally struggle with on Lava Loon decks is when do I just try to keep pumping up in the first two minutes and when do I just drop my lava hound like say for example I already have you already have a pump down on your side of the arena are you going to go ahead and play a lava hound when you get to full elixir or are you just going to take that second pump and then just keep defending or whatever either one of you can I, take that I should do a second pump it, it depends on his deck mm -hmm. but if he don't really got a good deck against really quick pushes and also two collectors down is so powerful that if you got two collectors down you win the match so it doesn't really need to be one push but if you just can get the two elix elixir collectors down you win the match yeah that's a that's a good point two elixirs especially with lava loon is is so devastating it's so frustrating to play against uh a question i guess dion for you is what do you find the most challenging type of matchup for this deck is there a certain deck that you uh you know you need kind of next level strategy for or do you think this deck is really powerful against every deck in the meta well it's really powerful against almost every deck and it's only not really good against Zep bait with Inferno Tower and a rocket because mm -hmm. they are able to rocket your pump or your Lava Loon push. And if they, they just got, if they if they put a rocket on your Lava Loon push, your loon is almost dead. So it's really, really hard, especially with that princess. But it's possible if you got, if they rocket your Lava Loon pump push, you can pump up and that's how you can get the electric advantage to win. But that's a really hard matchup. Okay, uh, just a, a question. Just take get a step taking a step if I can speak taking a step away from the deck for a second. Just wanted to, since it's both of your first time on the channel, if you could just go maybe one at a time and tell us a little bit about yourselves as a players. How did you get to the point where you were number one in the world, and how did you get you know into deck creation, Dion? So I guess we can go ahead and uh, and start with you. Okay, I uh, well I played a lot of Clash Royale a lot. So it's just like playing a lot. It's really important. And a few months ago, I started playing competitive for Hammer Esports. And oh, that's nice. really where, where most of it started. And deck creation, I uh, created more decks, but more about being creative and anticipating to the meta. If you see what the meta is, you can counter it. Okay, and a follow-up question uh, before you move on to you, Jan, is where do you see the meta going, or do you see the meta shifting at all after these upcoming balance changes? Well, I see Zepbait being more powerful because nothing really being nerfed in that deck and the counters to that deck being sort of nerfed. So I see Zepbait being more powerful. 
And because Zapbait is going to be played more, also Expo will be played more, and the Lava Loon deck will be still very strong. Okay. And uh, Jan, same question to you. Tell us a little bit about your background. You're both from the Netherlands, right? Yes, we are. Okay, tell us a little bit about how you picked up Clash Royale and how you realized that you were good. Um, so yeah, I was um, playing really a lot um, play of Clash Royale, and so I, I got the Max account of my friend to try out, and I was really good at doing that. And so I just dominated like a lot of ladder matches. I played competitive as well. Um, with my friends, and um, I'm gonna play Clash Royale Worlds for the Netherlands as well. Nice. So it's captain. Awesome. Are you both on that team? Yes, we are. That's fantastic. I'll definitely keep an eye on you guys. You guys seem like you have quite a stacked roster. Yeah. Uh, yeah? How do you feel about your chances? Pretty good. I think I'm good with a lot of decks, not just only Lava Loon. I can play a lot of different decks. I'm good in competitive play as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, what are you, what's your favorite decks besides Lava Loon, guys? Um, my my favorite deck is Golem. I, okay. I really like down, the Golem. Yeah. It's just really good beat down in this meta. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you, Dion? I uh, I also love Golem because uh, I just prefer beat down over chip damage, mm -hmm. and I also love the free musky deck with the battle ram. Oh, I love that one too. That's what I'm playing right now. But I, I struggle. I'll tell you what, I really struggle against this deck though with it. Uh, I've ran into it a couple times actually yesterday, and <laughs> man, when you freeze my three muskies, there's nothing I can do. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yes, the hard if you part. you timed the uh, freeze correctly. Yep. It's going to be really uh, hard for yeah. the three months. <laughs> it's very frustrating. Do you guys have any opinions on the hate that Lava Loon players kind of kind of see? I, I know people find the deck very frustrating to play against. So obviously, any deck that's successful is definitely going to have some haters. Do you guys, you know, care about that? It seems like obviously you don't. You're number one and, and two in the world. Actually, Bob the Rock is in the clan as well right now. He's playing the number two account. Uh, but yeah, a any thoughts, any any words to the people who don't like uh, Lava Loon so much out there? Yeah, they should definitely try Lava Loon. And I don't know <laughs> if they will hate it after that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's wise words, wise words oh. there, man. Well, so give I, it a I try. Guess, yeah, it's really great. He, I, I started playing this Lava Loon when I like two to three weeks ago, and I, uh, I, I just started playing with my friend Jumberg, because he hated it first too, and now he loves it. Now he loves it. You turn, you're turning people into believers. Well, uh, <laughs> it, it's really been a pleasure having you guys, uh, having you guys on the channel. You both. Uh, a lot of insight, I feel, to the deck. Hopefully you guys came into the episode or, or leave the episode with a better understanding than what you came into it with on the deck. Guys, any final words, shout-outs, anything like that before I let you go? Well, a shout-out to our friend Bob. He's a really great, great player, a great guy. And um, a really big shout-out to Serge Go Goblin. Serge! Um, yeah, he's, awesome. he's our friend. He's, uh, he also taught us a lot. Awesome. Yeah, Serge, Serge has been on the channel uh, many times now. Uh, also a good friend, great guy. So uh, anything else, any place? I'll include your Twitter information, but where can people maybe reach out to you? Is Twitter the best place if maybe they have any questions or feedback on the deck? Yeah, yeah Twitter. Can definitely contact us on Twitter. Twitter. I'll just respond to all messages if you send me on Twitter. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, guys, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's awesome to have you guys. A two, another two pro uh, video. Congratulations on the deck, Dion and Jan, and your achievements. Uh, global number one, both of you guys now. Uh, and hats off and, and best of luck at the end of the season. Hopefully you uh, you remain at the very top of the leaderboard. So, guys, thanks again for coming on. Yes, thank thanks, you for having, thanks for having, having us. us. Okay. No problem. So, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, really fun to review those decks with those pros. Uh, so go ahead and check out my YouTube uh, sponsor and partner, Bren Chong. His information is in the description below for tournaments, giveaways, and much, much more. And, guys, thanks so much for watching. And, as always, take care, guys.